We have freed our mind from its shackles as we do our second run of the full release. Darkest it was Dungeon you 2. Who found the cipher, scribbled hastily in the decaying margins of some long forgotten tome, scribbled in blood. Whether by providence or happenstance, we stumbled upon the mark of some strange power invoked the world over. Reflected in cultures predating mankind itself. A semicircle radiating five points of power. The stress. A symbol hidden deep in the iconography of every ancient empire. The Iron Crown. Enigmatic and ubiquitous. Interesting. I've never seen that before. The Iron Crown is also the symbol for stress. Your recollection mends the rifts of this sundered plain. We approach the Altar of Hope and we have a bunch of candles to use. 85 frickin' candles. Wisdom will help you choose a path. Resourcefulness will ensure you survive it. At the Intrepid Coast, we can upgrade... We've got Journey. The next upgrade is Charity. Increased chance that candles appear at map locations. Resourcefulness, foresight, plus 5% location scouting, route scouting, companionship. Oh, this is how we get our pets. Uh, orphan wolf club, uh, cub, sorry. Unlocks pet slot on the stagecoach. Orphan wolf cub can now be found. Plus 5% stress resistance per luxury gear item. Equip plus 10% positive relationship chance. Okay, we well got to get that. A little company for the long ride ahead. Pygmy Pliskin. Okay, <laughs> can be found. I want my Cosmo Kitty. My black kitty. I can see it right there. Mm. Well, well, let's check the rest. Renown uh, unlocks filthy stagecoach skin. Okay, I don't know. I don't think I wonder if those actually do anything for us. The Infernal Flame. The Despairing Flare can now be found at the Valley Inn. It mounts on the Stagecoach. Despairing Flare is plus 10% negative relationship chance. Minus 10% positive relationship chance. Negative Cork chance at Inn plus 10%. On Meltdown. Okay. Seems like it'll make things more challenging. I guess that's the idea. Uh, let's see what else there is. The working field. To recall a thing is to make it real once more. I think this allows us to unlock more items. So let's do some of these. A welcome advancement in the science of survival. Strange sapper trinket. Apply on hit weaken. Apply on miss. Um, block. Okay. Uh, let's get combat item. Every twinkling recollection is another implement at our disposal. The Thunderclap Grenade. The whole party, shuffle enemy party and add 25% stun chance. Cool. Um, let's get another one. New instruments will oh. help us diagnose the world's affliction and overcome it. Healing salve, that's pretty cool. Let's uh, let's just get everything up to three. A drop of sanity in a sea of madness. Plus 100% hero shrines location scouting. In items. Stimulating poultice, one target, plus four speed until next in. That's cool. Speed bag. One target round start, 5% dodge chance until next time. Okay. The Living City, uh, this will allow us to unlock the new heroes and upgrade them. So let's get the Hellion. Hellion. The Runaway. The Runaway. The Jester. Jester. Occultist. Occultist. And then we have 65 more candles. 
Um, so what I'm, what I, I think if I remember correctly, the people that we, the party that we ran with last time that survived should be recruitable again. Uh, was it just the leper that died? Can't quite remember. So we had the flagellant, flagellant, plus three death, plus three percent death blow resistance. A little more light. A little more strength. The Vestal. Oh, it's the same kind of thing. The true splendor of a world. Those who live within it. I think it kind of makes sense that we do. It's kind of like a role playing thing where the people that we went on an expedition with gain like experience. So I think I'm going to upgrade all of them. A simple flower trinket will get unlocked. On move? On gain on move resist? Huh. Okay. On uh, to uh, regen. Gain on stun resist. We get block. Gain on crit. Melee skills. Uh, 25% chance of stress resist. And then we also had the highwayman. A new trinket. Tormenting locket. Melee skills plus 50% crit. Open vein skills plus two uh, bleed dealt. Gain on hit. Range skills plus one. Stress resist for 25%. 25% chance. Um, let's get a. Let's keep getting more on those. Sharp shot. I never miss. Ha! <laughs> Just like I never die. Range skills plus 25% damage. Oh, it's a path. Melee skills. Oh, so this is a range kind of. Hmm. I wonder if I shouldn't uh, get more skills upgraded before I get that path. Let's get all of the ones. So that's um, one, two, three, four, five. Let's upgrade all the ones I used to five. A new path. Chop skill plus 33% damage. Uh, debuff resist is 33%, I think. Plus 100% disease resist, but lowers max HP and lowers speed. Huh. And plus four max health. Oh, straight up. Uh, Icon of the light. If rank equals four, so right in the back, plus two regen dealt. Target of consecration skills minus one stress. Ooh, nice. But you lose damage. Okay. I think that would be a good thing to get. And then a new path, the Confessor. Rank flexible role that specializes in debuffs and token removal. Turn start, that's that increased debuff chance. Hand of Light, Illumination, Judgment, Mantra. For those skills, okay. And then one, two, three, four, five. Unshakeability plus 10% um, uh, stun resistance. Try my best to remember all of these. <laughs> The tokens. I'm trying to. I'm trying to internalize them. So for the flagellant emancipation trinket, if HP is less than twenty percent, plus twenty five percent damage. Target punish skill. Steal positive token. That's neat. Minus twenty percent bleed resist. Ooh, <laughs> that sounds cool. A little more light. A little more strength. The maniac path sacrifices blight potency in favor of flexible. Positioning, debuffs, and disruption. Sacrifice and sensation to the last. Let's punish Asterine, Sepsis, and Lash's gift. I don't know if we got Sepsis. I hope, I hope we don't. <laughs> Plus 3% death blow resistance. Okay. And uh, we still have 41. What, what's in the Timeless Wood? The more they have to hold on to, the harder they will fight. Oh, yeah. I never... Uh, someone explained this to me. Oh, it's specifically Halkran, Casilda, and Dismas that we can upgrade. Yeah, so we can keep going with them. That's pretty cool. Uh, evocation. More memories are available to choose from when eliminating onto heroes. I, I never really played with this, so let's try. Select memory. Mother's comfort. Bleed resists. Fresh bread. 
On in item use of food item, plus 5% max HP until next in. Okay. When all is lost, we cling to what we can remember. Oh, I see. Reflect now on simpler times, precious moments, and finer things. Recalling memories costs 20% fewer candles. When the coach slowed at last, I demurred at how the voyage is often more transformational than the arrival. I This is cool. I like this idea of giving the people that survive a bonus. Mother's comfort or a warm fire. Light resist. Or bleed resist. What was that? Um... Hearts and minds will carry the day. This gives you minus 20% bleed resist. Also, what's the next one? Another trinket. Remove one negative token, remove a uh, combo. Target, endure skill, steals negative tokens. Steal combo token. Minus 20% burn resist. Okay. The stall gets if flammable item equipped plus 25% damage. Illumination skill uh, to burn. When hit, 15% chance for one burn. When they're hit, yes. Leper is another trinket, inevitable end. Break skills, cannot gain block for two rounds. Gain when hit. If speed is less than or equal to two, remove um, vulnerable and remove weak. 2% death blow resistance per round. Man, these are these are freaking complicated, guys. Okay. So if uh, we end up getting this trinket, we, we want to, we could balance that off with some uh, bleed resist. With Mother's Comfort. A fleeting impression. A flickering light. And Casilda will get light resist. And then we've got the mountain. What is this? A towering. Is this a new? Here you unlock cosmetic alterations to each character class. That's neat also. Let's um let's unlock uh one alteration for each hero that we used last time. Weapon kit, sharp shot. Variety. Seraph. Superfluous for some. A necessity for others. <laughs> That's true. Usually it's superfluous for me. Maniac. Oh, that's so cool. So if we take that path, we can also take that uh, that palette. Let them be the monarch. For the apocalypse. So you can change their weapons or the way they look or their color scheme. The more they have to hold on to, the harder they will fight. Memory is the hearth that warms the mind. Um, how much is it for these? Three. Sure, let's get this path. A little more light, a little more strength. So yeah, it was the um It was the leper that passed. So we'll upgrade the other two. The true splendor of a world. Those who live within it. These are all the things that we've unlocked so far. Okay, let's embark. Once more into the maelstrom, in search of what hope yet remains. If you're familiar with Darkest Dungeon One, that they kind of that's a little bit like the city that you're upgrading. I think pref I think people do prefer kind of the idea that you're upgrading the or that city, the the mansion. But it, I think it kind of at the end of the day is pretty similar. You must face your failures or be consumed by them. 
Uh, we have passed the Nile and we're on to resentment. Let us drag your agglutinated indignities out into the light. Agglutinated? <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to have to look up later. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean, Wayne June? Your vociferous calls to bring our findings before the faculty were dangerously premature. Given the gaps in our understanding, doing so would risk ridicule, or worse, robbery. I took no pleasure in asserting my seniority, stifling your protestations with a strict mandate of absolute secrecy. You acquiesced, but your plaintive susurrations betrayed a burgeoning resentment. Did we lose some flame there? The crossroads. Wait by the lantern's light and welcome what help may come. Yeah, Hulkran. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll bring Hulkran in. Zealotry. An undying blight upon the soul. And we'll bring in a new man at arms, and I have the perfect name for them. Pride. More devastating than the horrors of a hundred campaigns. It's G-Man! With the double N. Thank you for the support, G-Man. Uh, Resolute Defender tempered by the merciless blows of innumerable assault. Uh, front rank guard durable repost. Land the killing blow on two plus pillagers. We have um, crush, rampart, defender, bolster, hold the line, bellow, and stand fast. I think I want stand fast. Bolster is good for removing stress. These were all quite good. We get to move forward. Ooh, that's cool. Self heal 10% when target is uh, comboed. This moves us forward too, though. That we can do from the back. I think I get rid of uh, hold the line. Actually, defender and stand fast are pretty similar, eh? And that means guarded, protected by an ally unit. So maybe we don't do stand fast. So the uh, bellow is ranged. Removes counter and minus three speed for three turns on all of them. Maybe bellow seems, bellow seems kind of, hold the line um, only from the front two. It's crush. Well, the line is an attack also. Maybe we get rid of Rampart. Do you hold the line instead? So if we get knocked back, we can move forward. And then we're stuck there as well at the front. Okay, that seems good. Quirks Gaunt Slayer versus Gaunt plus 5% crit versus Gaunt plus 100% death blow resistance piercing and Needler. Minus 5% positive relationship chance, plus 10% negative relationship chance. I guess that's what I should be calling it. Positive and negative relationship instead of banter. We just have the wanderer path. Okay. So that's G Man. Welcome to the crew. Um, we're bringing back Dismas. Hunted, harried, a fugitive seeking to outpace the past. Do they keep, oh, they don't keep the same quirks, I think as before. Plus 30% damage if target's HP is less than 25%, plus 5% crit. Gain on hit vulnerability, cool. Maybe those were the same. We had the sharp shot.
But how many ranged skills do I have? Do we want to go all range? I do kind of want to try that out. Take aim, ranged, ranged. That's melee. Do I want wicked slice or open vein? I think I want open vein. Although having the plus 20% death blow resistance piercing is good. Um, but since we're taking this path, we have um, melee skills minus 25% damage. So having the bleed makes more sense. Also, I can change the weapon kit to sharp shot. Cool. You also have this maniac path. Punish, acid, rain, sepsis, and lashes gift. Neat. Not that big of a difference, though. <laughs> so I don't think, yeah, I don't have sepsis. Um, so it says sacrifice blight potency in favor of flexible positioning debuffs and disruption. Steal all negative tokens. There we go. So weird. Uh, I don't understand why I'd want to steal the negative. Oh, the negative tokens from allies. Right. Okay. I was thinking enemies. Acid rain doesn't do blight. Okay. But it lowers, it weakens enemies in the back. Okay. Why is the... Uh... Why is there a... Is that the path? Bloodthirsty. Oh, we can watch these again. That's cool. Enter the shroud. Your goal is plus two plus assistance encounters. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that symbol means. Okay, and uh, the final one is going to be... Oh, they were... Oh, it, that's, that means that they were in the previous one. A sister of battle. Repudiated, but unbowed. We've got the Confessor. Rank flexible role that specializes in debuffs and token removal. Like this idea? Wait, it is... They do keep all of their, all of their quirks. I love it. That makes... That gives you more continuity. It affects Hand of Light. Oh, gives more, uh, gives strength to self. Illumination. Removes two positive tokens. Neat. Judgment is the damage one. And it adds some debuffs. Uh, Divine Grace. The healing skill. We definitely want Consecration of Fortitude. What about... Yeah, I like this. I like this. I'm not going to change any of those skills. I know I can change them on the go. Seems seems good to me. All right, let's go. Oh, I didn't change her outfit. Damn it. <laughs> the Valley. When you are ready, this rutted roadway will finally take you home. Maybe I can change it now? That's kind of... I, I feel like you could, should just be able to change it on the fly, eh? Now, do I start with the stuff that I unlocked? You do. Okay.
Um, healing? I guess she can have that. She's the healer. Who gets the strange sapper? The one thing I don't... Okay, so this one here. Apply on hit. And then it says apply on miss. So if we miss the enemy, there's a 20% chance they get blocked. Or if we miss, we get a 20% chance to block. That's the one thing I don't really get. It is a sword. But <laughs> I think it's probably good on Dismas because we're going to be mainly attacking with him, right? And then we also have the Thunderclap Grenade. Give it to, give it to Dismas too. Oh, point blank shot we do not want to have equipped. Although it is considered ranged. Yeah, maybe we do. We could, we could do Duelist Advance. Sort of open vein to move forward. And then we also have G-Man's ability to, to move forward, right? With, um, hold the line. Okay. I forgot that point blank sh is a range skill. Because that combo is pretty nice. The, um, that like move the forward. More harshly on the far side of the brook. The, um, the, the move forward the and then point blank is super potent. Away. Especially if you get certain trinkets. Because uh, Duelist Advance gives you comb, gives you uh, repost. Oh, it doesn't move you all the way forward though, eh? Mm, I might need to reconsider that. So I think we want to do consecrations on everyone with her. Just a reminder that grants 50% chance to block or 50% chance to dodge to the hero in this rank on turn start. Oh, it's the person at the rank. Cool. You have to be at five plus stress to use that. Oh, we don't want to defend him because he's got the repost. I'm dumb. He doesn't repost, he doesn't get attacked. Yeah, see now he's consecrated. That's that's neat. Nice. We could remove the bleed. That's your job. Although, to be honest with you, someone mentioned in the last fight that I wasn't using like the healer to heal and blah, blah, blah. First of all, with the brain, you couldn't always use heal the skills that you wanted to. Second of all, in my experience, making like sometimes making ultra specialists can backfire on you if they get countered. Because then if you have like one person that does most of the damage, if they get countered, you're screwed. You don't you don't end up doing any damage. Oh, man. That's OK. And those are really good for removing um, the icons, right? Extra stress. So now, oh, I see. So instead of doing extra damage, 
with our conviction, we're applying um, weakness and stuff like that. Along with doing some damage. You're comboed so you can heal. Oh yeah, we want to do take aim as well before we do do a list advance. Because then we get um, the crit. All heroes are human. Or, or we do duelist advance. Then that, and then... Um, what's your blight resist? Yeah, we probably want to do duelist advance, then uh, take aim, and then point blank shot. Take the stress off of you. Ah, that improved the relationship. That's awesome. I feel like I need to turn the music up a bit. Does it seem quiet to you guys? I guess I maybe I turned it down at some other point. Let's turn it up a little smidgen. I want it to be impactful, you know? These fights should be intense! The other thing is, the targets have to be less than a certain amount. To be able to heal as well. Maybe that person wasn't as familiar with Darkest Dungeon 2. It's, it's, it's quite a bit different from the first one. Um... You need a lumen. Oh, removes two positive tokens. Only remove. Oh, okay. It doesn't remove two of the same. It'd be two separate ones. I like that they give you kind of an easy fight, so you can work out your strategies. I think I could just do point blank shot. Actually, no. Yeah, let's just do it. Um, I was going to say no, I could remove the token buff, remove the token, and then do it, but I think we'll be able to take him out. I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Stupendous. You're going to die. You do have death blow resistance, though. Ah, we can remove this. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm digging the, this way of doing things a little bit more. Plus, we have some ways to move around in case things get screwed up. Oh, I can hit her. Beautiful, G-Man. Simple variable. Easily resolved. We got some relics, rural riches, and distracting dust. Push on to the inn. Rest and resupply await you. I think distracting dust on Halcran because they can hit multiple targets. I assume Bellow is not an attack. Right? So, but this is, so I don't think that would work with Bella, but let me know if, if it does. Let's go. So this time we have to do four regions and we're gonna have to fight a boss at some point to get into the mountain. I think probably not the first area, Maybe the second one is the best time to fight the boss. Lower your guard. Soften your gaze. It is safe here. 
The companions reach the Torch and Crown. We gain two candles for reaching the inn. Torch and Crown heals us to 50%. Minus one stress. Minus 10% positive relationship chance. Plus 10% negative relationship chance. Ooh, not very, not very inviting in, I guess. Ah, the bounty hunter's here. There is no man behind the hunter's mask. Only a terrible thought. So, it costs us four candles from the expedition. But they replace a hero. So that hero will basically have one like one round for free where they don't get stressed, they don't get damaged, they don't get negative attributes, they don't get positive ones either or quirks. Um, I think I'll decline, but we'll, maybe we'll do it another time. I, I don't really know what the strategy is for that. You do it, do you just do it every time? Let's take a look at the, oh, first of all, I made Your a big coach mistake. Must be maintained if it is to carry you where you must go. <laughs> this has got to be the Akasambo, of course. Uh, plus 100% hero shrines location scouting. Let's equip that. We don't have anything else right now. Uh, let's see our route. Every road a winding torment. Every this... turn bent on our destruction. I think I looked this up before. It's pronounced the feeder. And booty is the modifier plus out. There's Cosmo right there. I need that. I need that pet. Uh, plus 100% academics cash location scouting. Plus 200% academic cash. Anti commerce. We have to avoid the hoarder. We get a work table loom, luxury gear. Before each location, chance to produce woven items. Don't know what that means. We got the sprawl, which we did last time, plus 100% oblivion tears. Is it an oasis? We get three candles. Well, I'm curious to know what the work table loom is, so maybe we go to the feeder. Um, okay, let's check out the provisioner. Fair, but fairly priced. It's the orphan wolf cub pet! And hold, hold on a second. Can I? Ah, it's a different slot. Oh, I don't even have this unlocked yet, do I? Or is it, or do I need the pet to unlock it? it doesn't look, it doesn't say it's locked. Um, expires if not mounted. Wait, it doesn't cost anything. A sound investment in roads yet untraveled. Let's equip this cannot be removed during this expedition. Hell yeah! Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. So glad they added that. What is this? Almanac. In the feeder plus 15% damage. Okay. Well, I really like laudanum, but um, is there something more expensive that I want to get? Drums. Let's get that. Let's get the laudanum. We can afford some of these. So there's heat shield, cleansing sensor. That seems pretty good. Plus 10% damage, minus two speed. Minor anchoring charm. I actually don't mind lowering speed on um, the man at arms. But this seems pretty good. Let's get that. And we can get that. Such power in such a little thing. Oh, add quirk 5%. I didn't notice that before. I think food's probably a good idea. Let's get some glimmers of hope. We already have some of these, so we could stack them. We already had some stress. 
Let's save uh, the rest up. That's pretty good. Hallcran once again. <laughs> it just looks like they're already dead. Wait, what did that say? I missed, I missed that. Very well. <laughs> okay, who do we want to have? Uh, do they have relationships to you already with, with each other? They don't carry over the relationships. Hmm. That would be kind of cool too. Oh yeah, we've got two of these. So maybe the front row and the back row. We've got um, extra extra speed. So I was thinking we want Dismas to go first. We want to give you lower speed even. Or Maybe we don't mind giving Dismas less speed. Still going to be going first. Maybe this is the way to do it. Who's got the worst disease resist? Casilda, okay. And move resist, or debuff resist. But maybe it's better on G-Man. Who also has pretty bad disease resist. Because you don't want him to get debuffed. Not sure about that one. Uh, so we still have dodge, 5% dodge chance. I think that'll be good on G-Man. Yeah, who wants the speed? Who do we want to have go first every time? Maybe I just hang on to this. No, I think I should just ease everything every time. Who's got the most stress? G-Man. This is just gonna be real fast, guys. Learn what can be taught, that you may stand just a little taller at now, the end. Now, let's get this combo going. Point blank shot. Oh, take aim gives you two crits. So long, so if we do that first, then we do duelist advance, then point blank shot. That seems good. The farms and fields of our kingdom overrun with putrescence and rot. Let's go. 